broadcast is part of the IC Robots Radio Network. Visit icrobots.com for this and many other nerd slash nostalgia related podcasts. You won't be sorry for long. Report recorded live on Jupiter's third largest moon, Callisto. He listens more than he talks, and he tells less than he knows. Because the game is to be sold, not told. That's how it goes. He's your host, Icy Robot. Greetings, Earth people. I am from Jupiter. It is me again, Icy Robots. I am not a hero, but I do sacrifice a bit of my week each and every week to make your week a bit less weak. And this week it is going to get so much less weak. We're gonna. We're going to talk about the, uh, we're going to talk about the origins of the show. This is, uh, episode number 150, a big milestone. We're going to, we're going to talk about Toys R Us, the sadness that covers us all. We're going to talk about a movie I saw called Pacific Room. It's going to be great. Hold it. Now, hit it. To the average MC, I'm known as the Terminator, funky beat maker, new jack exterminator. Destroying a ploy when your rhymes are non void, never sweating your girl. Why is that? Cause she's a schizoid. Always calm under pressure, no need to act ill. Listen when I tell you, boy, you, you got, got to, to chill. chill. chill, chill, chill. <laughs> Rate yourself. This is the Toys R Us report. That's the uh, that's the latest jam from good old engineer Emily, who we heard from last week in the ensign over in the ensign over in Pod B doing the rapping. She's pretty good, man. She does she does all our uh, voiceover. She does so much for the show. She works she works with a mining outfit over in uh, over in the other pod, and she's she's pretty tight with engineer Emily. That was, of course, a takeoff on EPMB's classic tune. You got to chill. That might be, that might be the greatest rap song of all the times. And EPMD might be the greatest rap group of all of the times. I don't know. I, I go back and forth. Sometimes I think it's EPMD. Sometimes I think it's Tribe Called Quest. Sometimes I think it's Run DMC. Sometimes I think that it's Public Enemy. Sometimes I think it's De La Soul. You know, De La Soul may very well be... The greatest group in the history of all of raps. I don't know. It's not. It's not uh, for me to decide. It's for. It's for history. So this is. This is a milestone episode. This is the big number one five zero, and it's got me. It's got me thinking back to the the origins of the of the Toys R Us report. And, and it goes, goes a little, little something, something like this. this. I don't know why. One, I don't know why I did two, it that way. Three. I I've been running icrobots.com for for like many 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 moons. I would write about this and write about that. And one of the one of the features that that got a lot of traction was something called the Toys R Us report, where every week I would just go down to the Toys R Us, take pictures of stuff, and then then like post the pictures and write about what I what I saw. I I had wanted to do a show for a while, but I was I was unsure of myself. Like like many people are 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 like many people are. Sometimes when I go to say are, it comes out or. I I don't know why, but I was unsure of myself like many people are. I I was unsure of my voice. I didn't I didn't think I had the the voice for it. I didn't I don't know, man. It's like I didn't want to put myself out there. To the degree that was that was necessary, but sometimes when you are faced with when you're faced with something you don't want to do, the best thing to do is to just do it. And I decided that, well, 
why don't I take this feature, this Toys R Us report feature that is, that's one of the most popular things on the site. Why don't I take it and try to make it like a 10 or 15 minute show where I, instead of writing what, what I saw, I, along with the pictures, talk about what I saw. And I didn't have, I didn't have a microphone at the time. I didn't have anything like that. So I used my phone and the first few episodes, I, I wasn't sure where, where to do the actual recording. I, I recorded a couple in my, in the closet. I recorded a couple in the living room. I remember I recorded one laying in bed and they sounded, they sounded horrible. Eventually I decided that I should, that I should set up a space on the good old Jupiter moon base up here on Callisto and use that as my, as my recording hole. And that's what I did. Then the the good old wife was nice enough to actually buy me buy me a microphone one year. She got me a uh, Snowball Ice. It's a nice microphone. It's white. And I I set up a corner of my desk at my workspace on the on the Jupiter moon base and I I put like egg crates all around it like literal egg crates and also like I have a few like like Starbucks Starbucks carriers and I I set up like a nice, nice sounding area and I, I started doing it that way. And for the first couple of weeks, I was just, you know, talking about the Toys R Us and talking about this and that. And then, then I decided that for whatever reason, I wanted to get my show on the, on the throwback network, which is like a large network of shows related to like retro type stuff. And I, I contacted this cat, Rob O'Hara, who runs the who runs the thing, and he was like, I would be happy to have your show on the network, but I don't feel like you have enough retro content. Why don't you do, like, a retro, like, a retro segment about, like, a toy line? And I said, well, that's a good idea, because I really didn't, I didn't know what I wanted the, the show to be, so I started, I started, like, breaking down different toy lines every week, but this was, this was really difficult for me. The, the research... The research was hard. I didn't like spending all my week doing doing research for a show. I didn't I didn't like reading stuff. I didn't enjoy reading stuff and while I did really dig learning more about these toy lines that I loved, week in and week out doing this was it was such a strain that I that I stopped really enjoying doing the show. So, I I had to make, I had to make some changes, and this led to the more, the more pop culture oriented, nerd culture oriented show that you, that you hear now. I, I do know that a lot of you guys really, really enjoy the toy breakdowns, and I try to bring them to you as as much as I can, but also on a note you have to consider is, I feel like I've done most of the of the toy lines that I was I was super interested in I've done I've done Silverhawks I've done the I've done a bunch of Karate Kid I've done the Rimco lines and it was it was just time to move forward and I I don't know man I didn't feel like doing these weekly toy essays was the best use of I don't know I don't want to say talents but the best use of my of my skills as a broadcaster. And that was another thing that that really tripped me out. Once I started doing the show, I was surprised to discover that it was something that I was that I was decent at. I I I was really taken aback by that that I I was able to do it and that people were liking it and it was all good news, of course. I was I was very happy that people were liking it, but it was, it was a surprise, and I, I wondered why I hadn't been, why I hadn't been doing it longer, or, you know, started, started earlier. That's a lesson that I want you, you guys to all get. Sometimes, you're, like, afraid to do something, but then it turns out that it's something that you love. It turns out that it's something that you should have been doing all along. Don't let your fear, don't let your fear stop you from doing something that, that you may enjoy. I was, I was really happy to discover that I enjoy this immensely. I enjoy I enjoy putting the show together. I enjoy talking to you guys. I enjoy all of it. And for the longest time, I wanted to do it, but I was I was too scared, man. Cowardice cowardice gets you cowardice gets you nowhere. Eventually, I was also inducted into a um another group. 
another group of shows. This was a group known as the Retro Junkies. Some some of the people over there were listening to my show and they they thought I was a good fit, so I got I got inducted into that, but as as time moved along, I I'm not going to say I'm not interested in retro things because I most definitely am, but I didn't I didn't want to get bogged down with the retro when I feel like we're living in we're living in nerd nirvana right now. We're living in a world where superheroes are like the most popular thing. We're living in a world where Star Wars is back in force. We're living in a world where there is a new Star Trek show and I wanted to I wanted to talk about all these things. I wanted to talk about all these things I was enjoying now. So I have I have moved away from the retro topics. I still I still talk about things that I find at the flea market and I still talk about things that I things that I buy on eBay. So I feel like the, the retro vibe is there. I enjoy I enjoy the good old days as much as I enjoy the new days, but the new days are what's going on now, you know, and it's it's important to uh it's important to keep your feet firmly firmly in the present because the present is is a great a great time now. It's not perfect. Things that we love seem to be getting taken from us all the time, you know, case in point Toys R Us. Toys R Us may be getting taken from us permanently and that's that's terrible, but there are a lot of things out there that are that are dynamite that I that I like to talk about. I like to talk about what I'm doing. I think I'm doing fun stuff. I'm having fun. I like to talk about these fun things and I, I've tried to incorporate them in the show. If you if you asked me what the show was about, I would have to say the show is probably probably about me. I was listening to an episode of Crazy Creepy Cool Movies with my man Doug McCoy and he was saying that the show is about me and my weird adventures and really really that's what it is, you know, when you're when you're deciding to do a show or a blog or anything, the only thing that you have that other people don't have is yourself. You know, your own perspective, your own your own way of looking at things, your own life, your own adventures, and I I try to share them with you guys and I'm glad I'm glad that you're I'm glad that you're with me. I'm glad that you enjoy this. I I get so much nice feedback. I get I get so many kind words and they they make it so much easier to stick with doing this because sometimes, you know, I'm not going to say it's a drag, but sometimes it is, it is definitely work. You know, I got, I got other things going on. I got things, got things to do and it is a bit of work, but I never, I never feel like the time that I spend doing this is a waste of time because I get so much, I get so much nice feedback. I, I get notes saying that the show is like a high point of your week. And if I can make your week a bit less weak, I feel like I'm doing I'm doing something something worthwhile. The Toys R Us report has also spun off a couple of other shows that I, I think are fun. We have the the audio handbook of the Marvel Universe. I enjoy I enjoy doing that. What I what I do with that, I'll I'll explain the process is a lot of times I'm done with the Toys R Us report by Friday. And I'll have that day free and I can I could punch out an audio handbook of the Marvel Universe in a few hours and then if something comes up that prevents me from putting out a new Toys R Us report, or if I'm just I'm just creatively burnt, that does happen sometimes. I'll I'll put one of those out there and fill in the fill in the Wednesday for you guys. I really enjoy I really enjoy recording those. I enjoy learning more about these Marvel characters that I that I know and love at least to a degree. I have also spun off this boring life. Which is a topic by topic look at the life of icy robots. I enjoy that show. That show is maybe my favoriteest to make, but it's it's very involved. A lot of sound effects, a lot of backgrounds, a lot of a lot of stories, and they they tend to be longer than the uh, than the good old Toys R Us report. So I'm always like in my spare time working on one of those. I always. I always have one in the works while while I'm doing this, and then at some point I finish, and then I release them. I, I have one now that's completed. We'll talk about that in the in the final segment of the show, and then I have a few ideas for ones that I uh, that I might make. I wanna I think I might want to do one about food, where I talk about like foods I've liked over over the course of my life. I think that that could be fun. I wanna I wanna do one about basketball. I used to be into hooping. I used to like hoop every day after school. I'd like to, I'd like to talk about that. I, I kind of want to do one about music. I, I have some, 
I have some ideas for for future shows. I I just don't know which one I want to I want to start up on after after this this one that I'm going to talk about at the end. If you have any ideas, if you have an idea for this boring life, if there's something that you might want me to talk about, some aspect some aspect of my existence that you might find interesting, hit me up. I I am always I am always open for ideas. If you have ideas for toy, toy lines that you would like me to talk about, I am still super open to talking about toys, but I have kind of reached the, the end of the, of the line, except for, except for these from Ace to Zartans that I'm doing. I'm loving those. I've, I've kind of reached, I've almost reached the end of toy lines that I have, that I have a ton of knowledge about. So if you have some that you would like me to research, hit me up. I am always open to show ideas. That's, uh, that's something too. Sometimes it's tough to think of a new topic week in and week out. So if you ever have topic ideas, please, please, please send them my way. Before we move into At The Movies, I want to say this has been a really, really fun, a fun thing for me. I've been doing this for a few years now. I got a 150 of these. I got nine of the This Boring Life. I've recorded like 20. They haven't all been released, but I got like 20 episodes of the audio handbook of the Marvel Universe. And it's been, it's been great. It's been a very, very, very fulfilling experience. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that you guys have joined me for that. So this is, uh, you know, Big 150. I'm stoked. So let's move into At The Movies where we are going to talk about Pacific Rim. <laughs> In a moment, at the movies, without Ebert, Siskel, or even that dude Roper. But you got Icy Robot, so that's something, right? My father sacrificed himself to help save the world. I'm back. This is your chance to make things right. I'm gonna make my dad proud. It doesn't matter where you came from. This is our time to make a difference. Fight everything you've got! Rated PG-13. We went to see Pacific Rim 2 on a Sunday, the Sunday that it opened. I, I thought the theater would be super duper crowded and we got there, like, way early, but... Only maybe 15 or 20, 20 people were in the entire, entire cinema. So we, we got to sit there and play with our phones for like half an hour. It's all good though. I was, I was a giant fan of the original Pacific Rim and Guillermo del Toro's creative world that he built around these Jaegers and Kaijus and all this, all this stuff. I thought it was a really, really terrific, terrific type fantasy, maybe fantasy, sci-fi Sci-fi fantasy, you have the Jaegers, which are like, you know, robots or mechs from Robotech. And they are, they're definitely sci-fi, but then you have the monsters that they fight. And there, there is like a fantasy element to that. So, sci-fi fantasy, I guess. You had the, you know, the creative sci-fi fantasy world that our man GDT um, created. And in the sequel, you hope that they would continue on with some of that, but... But our man just won the Oscar. He was doing Shape of Water. He didn't he didn't come back for Pacific Rim 2 and I would say the movie greatly suffers for for that they they didn't have the the creative world that that was crafted for them. This was mainly about it was mainly about robot fights to be honest and I I'm not going to say that like the robot fights weren't like the best part of the first movie but the fights are only one layer of the thing. You know, you got you got the world, you got the characters, you got the robot fights, you got the you got the kaijus and they have to be creative and you got like weird science and scientists and all these things. There are all these factors that have to all go together to get a to get a good kaiju type movie and Pacific Rim had one. They had the one layer and that one layer didn't fulfill didn't fulfill the multi-layer cake that that something like this requires. I don't want to, I don't want to say that it was all bad though, because it was fun. I had a decent enough time. The movie stars John Boyega. 
He is in storyline the son of Idris Elba's character in the in the last movie and some of the other side characters from the first film are in this Charlie Day and his scientist partner and there's there's a couple others the movie the movie's not all bad it is not all bad it's not all good but it is it is what it is it's John Boyega and this this other younger girl character having having a bunch of robot fights there are robot on robot fights there are robot on kaiju fights it's it's a lot like a transformers movie they they have a lot a lot of animated robot scenes and that's fine i guess when i when i go see a pacific rim movie not involving uh, guillermo del toro i think that i'm going to expect a lot more robot fights and a lot less subtlety which is which is what you got here. It was, it was fine. It was decent. John Boyega, John Boyega has a good, you know, has like a good charismatic personality. He's always fun. This, this young lady, what was her name? I am not familiar with her at all. Her name is Kaylee Spaney. She's some sort of a pop singer. She plays, you know, the young teenage gal who's all spunky. She was fine. Scott Eastwood was fine. The movie's not too long at all. It's like 111 minutes and it really does... It really does cook uh, as it goes along. It's just, there's not a lot of subtlety. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of story. Right now on Tomatoes, they have it at 46 with the critics and 56 with the peep. So it is, it's certified rotten. The movie was directed by this cat, Steve DeKnight, who did um, some work on Daredevil. the, The TV Daredevil and the TV show Spartacus. Stuff like that. This is his... This is his first shot at a big time movie like this. And you know, it's fine, it's passable. I I cannot give this one like a super high recommendation, but it's not, you know, it's not altogether not fun. Maybe check it out if it plays on like FX or on HBO or Showtime at that point, you know. It might be worth checking out. Get it at the Red Box, something like that. If you just want, you want to just like kick back, watch something that's not all that great, not all that good, but really, uh, really goes along. I'm going to give it on the good old fashioned Source Magazine mic meter with one being a dud and five being an all time classic. I give Pacific Rim Uprising 2.5 2. 5 mics. 2.5 mics. 2.5 mics. Tonight's program has been brought to you by Richer, Stronger Hills Brothers Coffee and New Instant Hills Brothers Coffee. The first instant coffee that smells like coffee. And Kellogg Sugar Frosted Flakes. Kellogg Special K for bodybuilding protein. And Kellogg Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle, and pop. This week, your boy, I see Robot is going to look back at his home away from home. The world's biggest toy store, Toy Star Us. I don't want to, I don't want to belabor the point of what's going on over at Toys R Us. It's, it's not good. It is, it's all bad. It's all bad in the hood, but I thought that this would be a nice time to to share some, just some thoughts and some memories and things that I, that I've accumulated over, over the years of, of Toys R Us. I go to Toys R Us once, maybe twice a week. It, it seems like that's all going to change and that's all, that all is what it is, but it is something that I have done for, for many, many years. And it's just a regular, like a regular old part of my routine. And I, I just want to look back kind of see how that routine started when I started going, going to Toys R Us, this and that, the, the Toys R Us here in Santa Rosa that I've gone to for, for seemingly my entire life was, by my accounts, built long before we moved to Santa Rosa, by, by long, I have no idea I have no idea how long the wife has lived here longer than me. She's lived here the entirety of her life. And she cannot think back to a period of time in which there wasn't 
a Toys R Us on San Rosa Avenue where it is now. By her recollections, they put the Toys R Us in and then they built they built the shopping center around it. Right next door to it is an REI that used to be a Marshalls and then there's like a like a play it against sports or there was a play it against sports and then on the other side there's cost plus and like a Verizon store and a party store and I think maybe a vacuum cleaner store if I'm if I'm remembering correctly and then a a vitamin store or something the the Toys R Us came first everything else came after that by by her memories my mom used to be one of the assistant managers at the marshalls that was next door to the toys r us when we were coming up and this is this is something i've talked about before and she would work you know like the weird hours that managers worked with a lot of overage and a lot of this and a lot of that and we would we would get dropped off to her sometimes and the way that she would deal with this was you know to let us go and look around the Toys R Us. Sometimes, sometimes she would give us a bit of money to spend. Sometimes not. Sometimes we would, we would like collect the aluminum cans and get some extra, extra cash. When I say we, I mean me and my, my younger bro would get, would get thrown into there. We spent a lot of time there. At least, at least once or twice a week, we would get dropped off to my mother at work when she was, when she was supposed to be off, but managers always got to work, always got to work some unpaid overtime, you know, so that led to a lot of fun Toys R Us trips. I'm, I'm trying to imagine what the store looked like on the inside at the time, because it was, it was way different than how it looks now. Now there is like a giant babies, babies R Us portion and stuff. Before there wasn't there wasn't any of that. The the door, the entrance door would lead you right into the right into the section where the video games were on one side and on the other wall was board games. Board games used to be a big a big part of the store and on one side video games, one side board games. The video game side, if I remember correctly, had a had a row in the middle and this was like a like a plastic plastic encased row, you know, like acrylic, acrylic case. And inside the case were, they were like the, the computers of the day, the Atari home computers, the Commodore 64, and then they would have like the, the game decks, you know, the Atari 2600s and the, the different ones were all inside there where they would be on and hooked up to a TV or monitor, but, but you couldn't touch them. You couldn't get like down into them. You could only see them. They had they had like these, I guess you call them like these wall mounted acrylic envelopes full of full of slips. And what you would do is you would you would pull the slip and go up to the cash register and turn that in. They would give you the receipt for it, and either either they would bring it up to you, or you would have to go you'd have to go and pull around the back of the store to the to the customer pickup. There was. There was this wacky area back there where they would, they would leave bigger items for you. Like if you ordered, for example, a swing set or maybe even like a bike or whatever, like a, like a sand pit that was shaped like a turtle with a big turtle shell lid. If you got one of those, you would pick it up in the, in the back of the store with your car or your truck, your U-Haul, whatever it is you have. And they, they had like a really dope sign with a uh, Toys R Us customer pickup over the years. They they got rid of that. They still have the the door and the loading dock in the back, but they don't they don't have the the customer sign with the with Jeffrey Jeffrey on it. Anyway, the board games, the video games, and then on the the other side, the video game side was was like one big area, and the the middle portion with the with the computers in it was it was lower. You could see over it, and then. On on the far wall, they would have the games and the software and stuff. And these were these were all inside of a of a case as well, like a wall mounted case. But you could stick your hand inside and grab the game, and you could, for example, flip it over or examine the sides. You know, look at the back to see what was to see what the you know the description of the game. And this was another thing where you'd have to take the you have to take the tab and go all the way to the the front of the store to pay for the game. I remember, like, having my hand in those holes and, like, rotating the games and looking at them all the time. Eventually, they, uh, 
They changed it to a system, I believe, where the games were, like, corded. They were attached by a cord to the wall. And you could still, you could still look at them, but you couldn't, you couldn't get very far with them. I feel like I've gone over this before, the, the interior layout of the Toys R Us when I was a kid. But I want to, I want to get it all down in, like, one, one big thing, you know, one, one easily findable deal. So, if I recall correctly, and this is something I'm going to be saying over and over again, because this is, this is all recollections, the, the store was segmented in two, in two halves. There was a big aisle right down the middle of the length of the store once you got once you got past the maze portion of the video games and coming out of the video games and facing the far wall on the left side was like bikes bikes were the big thing they had a giant two-tiered metal rack i think there were there were like two or three rows of of these sky high bike racks as a kid these these felt so big and they felt so ominous and the and the TRU still has the big bike rack when I when I go down there. And it is probably the same size. It's two bikes, you know, two bikes up, but it doesn't feel as if it would as if it would destroy me. But when I was a kid, I'd go walk over there and look at the bikes. And I would always I'd always be hyper aware of the fact that I didn't want I didn't want a Schwinn. I didn't want a Schwinn 10 speed to come come crashing down on me along with along with the bikes there were like like diapers and things like that like necessities and these were if you were facing the bikes from the 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 other side this was over on the left there were like the diapers diaper genies things like that i would never not ever go over there and then on the other side of the bikes if i am remembering correctly once again there were this is where the dolls were. The Barbies were over on the side of the store with action figures. But on this side were dolls like, you know, baby dolls. Like the dolls that you would get that simulates like you're having a child. Like babies that burp. Babies that babies that do whatever. They were all over there. And I would never, not ever go over there. And along the back wall were like... What would what would you call them? Like outdoor, outdoor playthings, not necessarily like swing sets, but things like, for example, like a croquet set. It wasn't sporting goods. The sporting goods were in a different area. This was like croquet sets, horseshoe sets, lawn darts, things like that. If I'm if I'm remembering correctly, and I would hardly ever go all the way down the length of the store. The store felt. It just felt so long. I would, I would hit up the games and I would hit up the action figures and the things like that. And sometimes if I had a a longer length of time, I might go all the way down to, down to the lawn darts. But for the most part, I stayed here because it seemed, it seemed so far away. When I go there now, it doesn't seem as far as one time, at one time, they shut the store down to do a remodel. And when they... When they remodeled it, the video game side was replaced with what you would call, not a Baby's R Us, but it's like a Baby's R Us slashed with like a clothing store. There's like shirts and pants and stuff. I hardly ever see anybody on that side of the store. We we hardly ever go into that corner. It's like facing the front. It's like the far right corner, a quarter of the, of the side is t-shirts and pants and things like that. I think also when they did the remodel, they may have, they may have made the warehouse wider and brought the store into like a, like a smaller space. One time I, I went over there, the door to the warehouse is, it's where the Imaginext and the like baby, not necessarily baby toys, but like younger child toys, the Imaginext, the, the Fisher Price, little people, things like that are all over they're all over on that side. One time I was over there and the the door to the warehouse was open. So I, I kind of snuck over there and stuck my head in. And it didn't seem, it didn't seem as long as I thought it would be. I imagined it was going to be ginormous. When I, when I got the chance to look though, it wasn't that big at all. So it may be a situation of the store not being as big as, big as I felt it was when I was, uh, when I was a kid. Back then though, going into the store, it was, it was like, it felt like when you go into Costco. And you look off into the distance to where they have the meat and stuff. And you're like, that feels like, that feels like half a mile away. That's what the, 
that's what the store felt like. Now it is, it's not cozy, but it's not like it has that, has that Costco feel. So going back, once you, once you loop around the corner from the video game maze, if, if my memory serves, the first row on the right side where you lead into like the cool boy toys and stuff, this was, this is where the secondary electronics types toys were. Like, like your Tomy handheld, like your, like your arcade consoles that, that sit on the, on the tabletop, you know, you have like the Frogger one or the Miss Pac-Man one, you know, you know what I'm talking about. They, they had things like that, various electronic games that would not qualify to be as dope as to be on the higher end video game side, but still they were necessitated to be, to be nearby because they were, they are technically video games and sometimes they would have like clearance, clearance video games, the cheaper games, things like that would be here, and then as you moved along into the next row, there was, there was, like, remote control cars and model planes, things like that occupied the, occupied the next few rows, I would, I would from time to time look through there and check out the, check out the different RC cars, I would see those advertised in comics or see them on, like, TV, and I wanted one, but... They were never, like, my main focus. I've always been into, like, toys and action figures. And every now and again, I would get, I'd get, like, a remote control car from Radio Shack. One of the, one of the kind that was on a wire. And this was, these were always so whack that they, they would definitely kill my interest in RC cars. But every once and again, I'll see somebody, like, racing one around the, racing one around the blacktop over at the school or over at the park. And I'll think... That looks like so fun. One time I was checking out over the fence and these homies were, they had like these super incredibly fast RC cars that were going laps around the track, the, the track that's right behind the earth base. And I was, I was like, that is just so dope. That looks like so much fun, but it's quite an investment. Not one that I'm interested in making. I think if I could rent one, I might rent one for the day and goof around with it. But this was what occupied the, occupied the aisles that came after after the video games, there'd be models, you know, like plastic models you could build. I was never into models either. I don't have the, I don't have the dexterity to, to put them together. I always had, I always had trouble with the stickers. I had to wet the sheet of stickers and then get the, get them right onto the side of the car. I always had problem with that. I, I think I would still, and like snap together models were, they're not cool. They weren't cool. They, they got the accomplishment of building a model, but every time, every time I would do one, I, I knew that I wasn't, I wasn't up to snuff to use the, uh, use the adhesives and whatever. That was, that was the next few aisles. And then there would be, there'd be like play sets, like real life play sets, like gun sets, you know, um, what am I thinking? Like cowboy, cowboy and Indian dress up type stuff was there. This is the aisle where you would find cap guns and disc guns. I was so into those disc guns. Those were to me like the dopest things. I also like the ones that shot those little, uh, plastic yellow BBs. I thought those were so dope. My parents were not the type that allowed me to play with toy guns. We, we had an uncle who lost an eye when he was a youth from getting shot in the eye with a rubber band gun. So my parents, they wouldn't allow me to have any kind of shooting gun. I would still get them. I would get them at like the 7-Eleven and hide them, but they would never, not never invest in one of these for me. That's what, that's what occupied the next aisle or so. And then then you would start to move into the action figures, and the the aisles were much taller than they are now. Now the they top off at about eye level, but at the at the time there was like a whole nother a whole nother up above where sometimes you might even have to get you might have to get somebody to get some help to get a uh, get something down. the The aisles were segmented by by company. I would think there would be like the Hasbro's, like the like the Joes would sometimes have an aisle or maybe even two aisles dedicated to them completely. Maybe like an aisle and a half, you know, one aisle and then some other stuff on the other side. And then there would, there would be Star Wars in another area of an aisle and it would vary. There were always end caps and it would vary onto who would get the end cap. That's the, that's the end portion, the display portion. Sometimes it would be full of G.I. Joes. Other times you'd come and it would be full of Star Wars. Sometimes it... Sometimes it might be full of some other action line, like grunts or muscles. I, I doubt grunts or muscles were ever there, but you get the, 
you get the idea. You go through those couple rows, and then there'd be a whole nother row. And this was one of my this was one of my favorite. This was where you would find the the more off-brand things, like the Rimcos. You would find like the Rimco Mighty Crusaders or Eagle Force. I remember as a kid, Eagle Force holding this one space in the back row, the back aisle for seemingly forever. I would go there every week and I would see these Eagle Force. And it finally got to the point where I'm like, I'm going to get one of these. Eagle Force were smaller and made out of metal. They were maybe half the size of a G.I. Joe, probably a, a little more than that. And according with their size, they were cheaper. If I, memory serves, once again, I'll say it, if memory serves, the Joe was like two ninety seven. And the Eagle Fours were like a dollar fifty or a dollar ninety nine. The two ninety seven, that number is built into my head. I forget what it came out to be with tax, like like three forty six or something. But I knew in my head if I could gather up two ninety seven, if I knew that we were gonna be getting dropped off at Marshalls, I would I would save up as best that I could. I would collect everything I could, every can, go to the store, do whatever, trying to get my two ninety seven. Because I knew that meant that I was going to get a G.I. Joe. The G.I. Joe's of Ben Franklin's were like four ninety nine, In my head, I'm always like, two ninety seven to four ninety nine. That's a crazy, that's a crazy markup. But it was what it was past that, past the Rimco's. This is where you would also find like the, the off-brand wrestling figures that I was really into. I was into these Rimco AWA figures and then there was like this... There was this whole another line of wrestlers um, that I was into. And the name escapes me. I, I kind of want to gloss over this. This is something I, I plan on dedicating an episode to at some point. Off-brand, off-brand wrestling figures. But that's where you would find things like that. Once you got past the the off-brand wrestling guys who get into sporting goods. This is where you'd find like baseballs, footballs. Starting lineup figures were sometimes over here. The the stadium. Do you remember the stadium that came with the starting lineups and you would insert cards or whatever and it would it would make sounds. It was a game. Some kind of like a baseball simulator. My brother had that. I, I talk about that in the in the starting lineups episode. Go back in time and check that one out. Then then you'd go to the front of the store, and the front of the store was of interest to me. It still is of interest to me. It has an elevated office up against the up against the front wall. You can go up a small staircase, and there is an office. And they use the space underneath the office to have carts. This is where this is where you would leave your cart on the way out of the store, and it's like a long tunnel that goes the length of the office. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with this tunnel. I wanted to know what was down there. It seemed. It seemed to me so much more than carts. And sometimes it was it was free of carts. All the carts weren't used. The carts were in the parking lot or whatever. And I would I would look down this empty tunnel and just just wonder what it was that was down there. The Toys R Us was such a such a home away from home for me as a kid. We were there we were there all the time and I've I've maintained that all the timeness all of my life. I went there Went there when I was a baby. Then as I went into junior high, I would still, I would still sometimes get dropped off at Marshall's and we'd dip into Toys R Us. And then even in high school, where it was, where it was kind of not cool to buy toys, I would still sometimes dip over there with my homies and we would, we would look around. It was fun. It was fun to look around Toys R Us even, even in the high school days. And still, still today, I, I go there. I go every Monday, every Monday guaranteed. That's. That's the day when we're out hanging and clanging. That's like our, that's our Sunday, y'all. We usually go to a movie, go to the dig, and then we'll go to Toys R Us just to, just to see what's over there. It's been, been a part of my, part of my routine for a long time. Let's, it's been a part of my routine for a long time now. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back with, I don't know, we'll come back with something. It'll be fun. Even the littlest architect can build a great house with these Lego Universal building sets. For three to five-year-olds, there are Lego people and blocks. In their own storage case, just $8.97. For five to seven-year-old builders, flower elements, colorful building and roof bricks. In their own case, just $13.87. I have been humming that tune like almost non-stop my entire life. I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. I, I find myself all the time going, Toys R Us, 
Toys R Us represents so so much for me. I I named the show the Toys R Us Report, and that shows you like like my level of my level of commitment. It goes it goes pretty deep. I've always looked like being a Toys R Us kid really does does represent something. It represents this this part of you that isn't isn't ready to grow all the way up. And some of us some of us have bigger portions of that than others. Some of us just some of us are grown and they they enjoy the enjoy the childish thing from time to time. I remember I read this interview with Rob Zombie in some magazine and he said that as he as he got older he always imagined that he would one day he would just stop enjoying the things that he enjoyed when he was a kid. He found that as he got older he just started to started to like them more and more on on a deeper level. That's that's how I feel about a lot of these things. A lot of these things are just, you know, like childish fun things, but a lot of these things that are contained in the Toys R Us, I, I appreciate them on a on a whole different level than I than I did when I was when I was young. The the Toys R Us is kind of it's kind of one of my safe space slash chill zones when when I'm getting a bit anxious, you know, when things are when things are overwhelming. We all we all get to that point sometime. A a trip over to the over to the TRU is often the often the cure for that. Just spending some time walking around looking at the at the Star Wars dudes, it it brings me back down to back down to where where I should be. The the Monday that I spend over there, we'll we'll be in and out in, you know, 25, 30 minutes. Sometimes sometimes even less, but the time that I I spend over over there really really chills me out and gets me ready for the the difficulties that the that the week might bring. We all we all have difficulties and we all we all got our own ways to deal with them, but I found that this is this is a nice nice way to bring down the blood pressure. I'll go in, go through the collector aisle where they have the mini mates and stuff and then I'll move into the Star Wars figures and go go take a peek at the at the Marvel Legends where where it seems like they never rotate, like we never get the Never get the dope ones I see on the Marvel Legend collecting Facebook groups, but still, it's nice to look at them. Then I'll move into the next row where they have, where they have, like, the DC Universe figures and Power Rangers and things like that. And then right past that is the, is the wrestling guys where I'll, I'm always on the lookout. My, my dude Gino Vega, he, he has, like, a giant collection of wrestling figures. And he's always, he's always asking me to keep an eye out for these 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 different ones and sometimes it's you know he wants like a Dean Ambrose another time he's looking for the architect Seth Rollins but more often than not he's he's looking for he's looking for one dude in particular the big dog Roman Reigns that's his that's his favorite WWE dude it might be his favorite dude overall I I don't know how many how many different Roman Reigns variants he has. The other week he he had me out looking for one where where the big dog turns into a werewolf. I thought that was wacky, but to each their own, you know. Whatever whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you whatever gets you through the day. If if the if the worst happens and we lose and we lose Toys R Us and it seems it seems more more likely every day that 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 will be the case. I'm not ready to I'm not ready to give up hope, but that does. That does seem like the most likely scenario. If it if it happens, I I think that my my toy hunting will go down will go down a lot less. There is also Target, and there's also Walmart. We have we have three Targets within easy driving range. We have two Walmarts within easy driving range. So the option to to look for toys is. It's still there. The Target, let's be realistic, does have about as much in the action figure department as the as the TRU, but the the problem is going to TRU, it's just it's just toys. You go right in, the whole thing is the toy section. If you go if you go to Target, it's it's full of you know, it's full of soccer moms, it's full of families, it's full of it's full of people buying all sorts of different groceries, clothes, everything. It's always it's always so hectic in so many ways that I do not get the relaxation that I get from going into going into TR TRU. The the target actually brings up my brings up my blood pressure 
in a lot of ways. Pretty, pretty stressful in there. It's so bright. And those, those colors, that red and white color scheme. And there's, there's so many, so many soccer moms. And I just, I don't know, dudes, I, I get stressed out. It's not at all the same as going to the, the TRU, the Walmart. The Walmart is a bit more my speed, but the, the Walmart over in Runner Park has hardly any toys. I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. It's almost like they have an end cap for all their action figures. The one in Windsor has a, they have a pretty fair size collection and I, I do, I do go look over there, but still you gotta go all the way through the store to get to the toys. The thing about the TRU is maybe I'll get something when I go. I'll usually get something, the wife will probably get some Barbie clothes, but it is, it's not like the most expensive thing in the world. When you go to the Target or you go to the Walmart, everybody separates. It's like 2.0 is going over to look at clothes. The wife's going to look at clothes. They're all going to look at stuff. And what would be like a $7.99 Star Wars figure trip has now turned into like... One wants a pair of pants. One wants this. It's like a $70 shopping trip. It's not, it's not the same. And it makes me not want to go there. I'll be like, I don't, I don't want to deal with all this. I don't want to, I don't want to wait while you're looking. And I don't want to wait while you're looking. I just want, I just want my few minutes in and out of the, of the TRU. I, I rue this. This is not, this is not sitting well with me. I have to admit, I've, I've been having some anxiety issues over this. Nothing major. Don't worry, your boy, your boy doesn't have those sort of issues. But, you know, sometimes when I get, when I get anxious, I'll get, um, a little bit of an upset stomach. Or I'll get, like, a little bit of pain in my shoulder. These are, these are common things. And I've, I've been feeling this. When, when the news first started to break, I, I was not taking it well. I wasn't, I wasn't crying by any means. I will, I will cut it off at that point. I'm not gonna... I'm not going to shed a tear. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best not to shed a tear. I can't. I can't make any promises. But um, when it first broke, this was not sitting well with me. I was getting an upset stomach. I I got a headache. I was having a real, real hard time accepting all of this. And I I still am. I'm losing. I'm losing a, a regular important part of my routine. And I, I feel for the people who, who may be losing jobs. I, I This is... This is not a good thing in any way. And what makes it what makes it so hard to deal with is the the fact that the Toys R Us is a profitable company and that they're just they're racked with debt. They went through bankruptcy and they're racked with debt. So it's sad in the sense that they should be able to hang on, but they just they just can't. This debt is pulling them down and it's hard. If if it was a, the factor of nobody goes to Toys R Us anymore, the store is losing money, no one buys anything, I would be able to accept that easier than the fact that they are doing well. Things are on the lookup for them, but they just can't get out of the hole that they were already in. It's hard. It's hard, man. I I don't know what else. I don't know what else th- there is to say at this point. Let's let's all bow our heads. Let's all give some. Let's all give some positive thoughts. Let's hope that, let's hope that there could be a turnaround, man. It's not too late. It's never too late. Let's move into the, let's move into the final segment of the show. So, where are you going now, Charles? Can't wait to see that new Toys R Us store. Jeffrey and his family will be waiting at the door. And Jim McMahon, star quarterback for the Chicago Bears, will make a special guest appearance at Toys R Us. In Chicago, next to Brickyard Mall, Tuesday the 10th, 7 to 8.30. Charles, Charles, just go to see some friends. Toys R Us, you'll never outgrow us. You've made it this far, it's time. The final segment, your weekly toy shop update, the Toys R Us report. We're already, we're pretty deep into the show. I, I apologize. This is, this is a big episode though. This is the big one, the big one, five, oh, the, the shows just keep getting longer and longer. And I wonder, is that okay with you guys? I, I feel like I have more to say lately, I guess, or I don't, maybe, maybe I'm just rattling on, dude. I don't, I don't even know, but they have been, they have been getting longer and I hope that. I hope that you guys are okay with this. I don't want to, I don't want to take up, I don't want to take up all of, 
all the time. I I got a I got a couple things this week over over at the store. I I got this one at at Walmart in the in the the clearance when we were when we were there looking at TVs. I got the I got the Rose. I got the Rose Tico action figure for Star Wars the the last Jedi. I I have the movie at home now and I've watched it a couple times the last Jedi. The first time I saw it I liked it. I thought it was I thought it was fine. I thought it was good. I I had a good time watching it and then I started to hear a lot of negative reviews. There was a lot of people down on this movie completely and and I wanted to see it again, but I I just never I never got around to it. So when it when it came out I was I was pretty stoked. I watched it once by myself and then I watched it again in three pieces with the wife. You know, we watched it for a while, then we ended up doing something else. We came back, watched it some more, ended up doing something else, and then finally we we got to see the whole thing. And I think in seeing it a second time, third time even, I I like it more than when I initially initially saw it. Sure, the stuff in Canto Bite is a bit long, and some of some of Luke Skywalker's behavior is a bit is a bit off putting in a way, but when you sit down and you have the time to like watch it at home and think about it and watch it again, you you see how some of these these Luke Skywalker things are they're actually pretty like decent writing. You know, Luke has Luke has fallen into a crisis of confidence, and some characters that you may not have liked the first time around, like Rose, turn out to be somebody that you watch it again. And you go, you know, it wasn't as bad as I as I thought the first time. It was it was actually pretty cool. I'm not gonna say that Rose became became my favorite character or anything. She's not she's not at all that. But when I watched it again, she felt she felt far less annoying than she did the first time around. I I, I felt her. I felt her a little bit. I I didn't mind her and her and Finn's adventure. The first time I saw it, I think that I was thinking this way. Canto Bite comes after after the early other stuff, and you're like, geez, this is really distracting me from the Luke Skywalker stuff that I want to see. I want to see more Rey. I want to see more Luke. I want to see more Leia. I want to see more Poe, but we're stuck with we're stuck with Finn and Rose. But then when I watched it again, I said, you know, this is not bad stuff in its own right. It's not the best stuff in the movie, but it is it is fine. There's a lot of a lot of wacky stuff going on in the casino that that's kind of neat to see. A lot of wacky creatures. The the master code breaker. He he's an interesting looking dude to a uh, to say the least. I want to know more about the about the real master code breaker with that little mustache. I, I normally don't like Justin Thoreau. That's who it is, right? That is Justin Thoreau, Jennifer Aniston's beau or ex beau. I don't I don't know, but that. Is not like my favoriteest actor, but I um I did dig the look of the Master Codebreaker, and I would I would like to see a bit more, maybe a comic, but then it wouldn't wouldn't have the wouldn't have the Justin Thoreau appearance. Well, it would, but it would be drawn. Wouldn't be the same. I would I would read it nonetheless. But I um to get back to the point, I picked up Rose at the at the Walmart. I haven't had the chance to open her yet. I guess I've had the chance. I just. I just haven't done it. It's a good likeness, though, looking at her at her here. She she sort of served to represent this to me in the movie. the The resistance is really worn down. They have they've suffered a lot of casualties, and they're down to the they're down to the women and children of the of the fight. The older ladies, the the goofy gals like Rose, and when they when they get down to this level. Rose steps up and she goes on a mission with Finn and she she comes through so I I don't know the this time around I saw Rose in a different light and I appreciated her rising rising from being some girl who works down in the down in the cargo hold to being being on a, a big time adventure I don't know man I'm I'm going to put her I'm going to put her sort of in the back I have the I have the page I have her sister already I might put her back there so the the Tico sisters are reunited. What else? What else did I get? I got I got a vehicle. This is the first vehicle I've gotten in the um Last Jedi, Last Jedi Lens. The first Star Wars vehicle I've bought in like forever, to be honest. I got the I got the Resistance A Wing. It's a it's a blue and white A Wing fighter ship and it comes with it comes with uh Lieutenant Tally. You see her you see her in the movie a couple times. She 
she's just kind of a head in a ship for the most part, wearing a wearing a helmet. I think at one point she goes like bombs away when when a uh, page when Paige drops her drops her payload in the in the opening scene. Unfortunately, Tally doesn't make it. She doesn't make it through the movie. She's in the she's in the launch bay when when a uh, Kylo Ren comes through. That's that's spoilers. If you haven't seen it by now, there's there's not a lot of excuses why you haven't. If you wanted to, and if you don't want to, I don't I don't know what to say. It's not a it's not a major story point anyway, so don't don't sweat it. It looks cool, man. I haven't I haven't opened it yet. I bought it I bought it at Toys R Us before they before the troubles and I I've just been sitting on it because I feel weird, man. It might be the the last thing that I ever pick up over at the TRU, so I don't want to I don't want to bust it open. I'm sure that I'll I'm sure that I'll get something else at some point, but um I haven't yet. So so we're waiting. We're waiting on that. What else? What else is popping off? I I keep thinking about the I keep thinking about the Batgirl movie and how how that's like that's all up in the air lately. I I was thinking, and this is something that would never uh, never happen. So it's not even it's not even worth mentioning. But it is it is kind of funny. I it was just like daydreaming, you know, and it, it came to me. What if um what if they called Greta Gerwig and they got her to get Saoirse Ronan the the fabulous team from Lady Bird and they. They flip a Batgirl movie starring Saoirse Ronan. Maybe you could go for the like the hipster style Batgirl that um they have now. The Batgirl, the Batgirl of Burnside. I think that would, I think that would be fun. I think that I wouldn't, I wouldn't know whether that would be something that anyone would be interested in doing. I don't know if Greta Gerwig would want to do a Batgirl movie, but if they toss it to her, who would, who would turn down some of those big uh those big DC bucks? It, it could be fun. I think, and DC's got a really They've got to really take some risks, you know. They gotta, they gotta swing for the fences. They gotta throw some hail marys and see if they, see if they can get some stuff, some stuff that might stick. You know, they, they need some critical, some critical acclaim. I think that, I think Aquaman might be cool. That's directed by James Wan. He's a uh, the Fast and the Furious genius. So I don't know, could be fun. I, I guess. I mean, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out, irregardless. So, so back to Captain Lieutenant Lieutenant Tally from uh. From Last Jedi, we were when we were watching this, and I, I feel bad for dipping all the way back into Last Jedi after after talking about uh, Batgirl, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it anyway. In in Last Jedi, we're watching it right, and Tally flies by, and you see her, you see her again, and the wife goes, "She's cute." I go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah she's cute. She's totally cute." And then then she takes it, and she's like, "Do you think she's hooked up with Poe?" She's like, "Poe runs around there like he." Like he hooks up with all the chicks, and I go, you know, I I wouldn't be surprised. He's a resistance hero. He seems pretty, he seems pretty suave. And then she's like, do you think that uh, do you think that he hooked up with uh, Rose's sister? And I go, eh, maybe, maybe, right? And then she, we're watching it again, and the the scene comes up where Rose and Rose and Finn present their plan to Poe that they're gonna. They're gonna try to do to save the day. I don't wanna don't wanna give up all the deeds, but their their big plan. Finn um gets a he gets a look from Poe that's like like eh like what are you what are you doing with her? And then he he says like where did you guys meet? And he sounds all he sounds all weird. And I I wonder if he's he's kind of thinking like like Finn Finn my dude you're a you're a resistance hero you're a big star you. You don't gotta go for the girls down in the down in the storage bay. You can you can get the girls on the bridge if you want. That's that's a bit crude overall, but that is that is where my head went when I was when I saw that when when the wife the wife presented it to me. I, I wrote that down as a note. And it took me it took me a while to interpret this note. It says uh it says Rose slash Poe and it it took me a while to decipher what that meant. I was I was at the dig the other day. We still go. We still go every week, but they seem like they have pulled the wackiness out of the place. There there's just like less wackiness going on. They have they have a very professional staff at the moment. At times they have not. They have had a lot of weirdos running the place. But right now, the staff is very professional and people are people are kind of acting in accordance. There's a 
there's a lot of polite warnings when people are, are trying to pull pull antics. So there hasn't really been like a dig report in a long time because it's just it feels far less wacky. The dig goes through goes through changes all the time, and right now it's it's on a not so wacky phase. So I haven't talked about it as much, and I haven't really been finding a lot over there. Most of my my big scores are coming from the from the flea market. This this past Monday though. I went in there and I got a bunch of stuff that was that was really great to me. I got like this whole basket. I found a basket and I filled it up with Starlog magazines. I love Starlog magazine and this one, this set that I got are all of um the early issues. Not every single one, but they're all they're all up to number 30 and I have I have just about every one, not every one, but just about every one, including, including number one, two, and three. I already have one, two, and three, but I, I got them bagged up. You know what I mean? I bought them on, I bought them on eBay and I got them bagged up and I've never actually gotten around to looking at them, but it's nice. It's nice to have these because these aren't in brilliant shape, but they are definitely in reading shape. So now I have, I have reading copies of these early, early issues of Starlog. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel guilty if I if I had to cut out a page with an exacto knife to scan it in, but I don't want to I don't want to do that with my other ones. I also got some some magazines called Trek Trek Magazine, according to according to the great Earl Green of the Logbook dot com. These are these are an early Star Trek fanzine that was limited to a a print run of like two thousand or so. I think I got the print run somewhere else, but Earl Green said. In his opinion, these are a great find, and I'm I'm very happy to have them. They they are quite neat. They're a full glossy magazine. I, I when I think fanzines, I think like I think like the Wrestling Observer, something that's like printed out on on printer paper. These are these are more like magazines. Let's uh let's get to the let's get to the iTunes reviews. If you wanna if you want to leave us an iTunes review, I am super pleased. I'm super happy that you would think about doing something something like that for me. It only takes a sec. Just hop over there, write a few words. And if you do so, this helps us somehow in the in the iTunes metrics. I don't know. I don't know the the workings of that stuff, but this is this is something that's supposed to help out. So, you can find us over there. It's Icy Robots Radio. And if you if you leave a review, I'll read it on the show. I will happily Super happily read it on the show. We got we got two this week. One is from one is from Retro Sean, and he says gives us five five stars. I definitely appreciate that. The only thing that could improve this podcast is if there were more of them. It strikes the perfect balance of movies, toys, collecting, nerdism, and most importantly, fun. Having lived in the Bay Area for six years, I see robots makes me remember what I loved and dearly miss about that area. His swap meet adventures, movie reviews, and genuine passion for toys and comic books shine through, as does his humor and easygoing personality. Definitely, definitely a highlight of my week. Those are, those are some definitely kind words. I appreciate that. We do, we do try to represent the North Bay, Bay Area. I like to, I like to talk about the local stuff. That, that interests me. And I'm also, I like to hear about other people's local weirdness. And I I hope that you guys enjoy Joey Herring of mine. I I appreciate this retro Sean. This was this was great of you. I from the bottom of my heart, these words these words warm the warm the heart. I guess I I try to have an easygoing personality. I I think that I think that's the easiest way to go through life, and that's that's something retro Sean notices. It's you just kind of got to let these things slide off to the best of your ability. You know, there's only. Oh, here's another one. This is from uh, Mike Stewart seventy two. That must be Stuntman Mike, my dude Stuntman Mike on Instagram. Stuntman Mike on on the tweets. He's a, he's a cool guy. He won he won a prize a while back. He proves that you can really win if you enter a if you enter a icy robots radio contest. Let's see let's see what he has to say. I've been listening for around a year, and I even went back to the very beginning to slowly catch up to the most recent episodes. This is one of my favorite podcasts, and it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling taking my old mind back to when I was a little lad. I see Robots is a great host, and he puts out quality shows that I can't imagine anyone not liking. If I could give it ten stars, I would. That would, that'd be great. That would count as, that'd count as two reviews. I, <laughs> I would appreciate that. So, Stuntman Mike, I appreciate that. That's super kind of you. We're pretty much around the same age, so I wonder, I wonder if the show resonates 
resonates with you with you harder being around being around the same time frame i i think it's interesting that you went all the way back and started over i wonder i wonder what that was like you must have seen the show go from being pretty crummy to only slightly crummy where we are now and that's that's cool you got to you got to hear that whole pooptronics thing with ab silver you got to you got to see him come back and bug us some more man that that must have been fun give me a tweet let me know what that was like let me know what it was like hearing it all from the very start must have been wild man that's that's like spending days with me straight imagine listening to every episode all the way through straight you're listening to me for like 3 days 4 days straight you would you would definitely go insane this is this is the last thing I, I think I'll I'll talk about. And it's uh it's a local thing that, that's bugging me to death. I I get the newspaper, I subscribe to the daily newspaper, the Press Democrat. I enjoy I enjoy looking at it in the morning while I'm while I'm eating my oatmeal and three slices of three slices of turkey bacon. That's my <laughs> that's my daily breakfast, plain oatmeal, turkey bacon, and and the newspaper. I'm I'm a wild dude, man. I'm nuts. I'm bananas. I'm up there living living on the edge. But the the newspaper has decided that they are going to remove the the print TV listings that they run every day. And I'm so annoyed because I look at these every every single day. Do any of you guys use the newspaper TV listings? I have been looking at these things since I was a kid. I would always go through and see what movies were going to play on KBHK or on uh, KICU or on TV50. I was looking for stuff to videotape, and to be honest, I'm still going through the listings, but now I'm looking for things that I, that I can DVR. I enjoy, I enjoy having this all just, like, on one, on one sheet of paper. When you use the, the guide, there's just so much scrolling, you know? I'd rather, I'd rather scroll my eyes along a piece of paper, but they are, they're getting rid of it. And they're going to move it all online. I'm like, great. Now I can I can scroll around on the computer instead of scrolling around on the direct TV guide. For some reason, this is this is bugging me. It's just like something that I've done every day for so long is being taken away. So many things are being taken away from me lately, man. I'm being stripped of all of my all of my my daily devices. I'm I'm the man that that time is leaving behind. Society's moving on. I'm standing still. I'm not even standing still. I'm moving backwards. I'm moving backwards into like 80s televisions and things like that. But next week, next week we have a special, uh, we have a special presentation. An all new, all fun episode of This Boring Life. This one is about, this one's about Illinois. But the state of Illinois, the state where I was born, the state I lived up until, up until fourth grade. This is a lot of like my early life's memories. Playing with Star Wars figures in the snow, throwing snowballs. Shopping at the Jewel Osco, going to Zayers, buying, buying Kiss Migos at, at Zayers with my, with my grandmother. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Hot dogs, pizza, the Chicago Cubs, the Chicago Bears. Somebody, somebody falls under some water. It's a, it's a good episode. I, I had a lot, a lot of fun making this one. I, I think that you guys, I think you guys are going to have fun with that. But then... The week after that, I, well, a family member is having some surgery. Don't worry. It's not a big deal. Very routine stuff, but it's something that's got to be done and it's going to throw, it's going to throw the whole schedule out of whack. I will do my best. I will do my best to get, get some kind of an episode out. I, I feel like I should have time, but with, with this going on, I, I don't want to, I don't want to make a promise that I, that I cannot fulfill. So the week after the week after this boring life, I'm I'm looking through the the stuff here. One sec. Let's let's flippity floop go into this folder here. And then if I am not able to make an episode the week after, we will have an audio handbook of the of the Marvel Universe. What a good one. The next one up is about uh, it's about Iron Fist, the the immortal Iron Fist of Netflix fame of Heroes for Hire fame. I'll put that out, and I'll also I'll also put a real wisdom a the real wisdom on let's see the the real wisdom on Rogue One. That's a good one. It's called Chances. I'll put that out. Plan on that. 
plan on getting the Iron Fist and the the Real Wisdom Rogue One chances, but there might be like a brief episode. You never know, man. Things could go fantastic, and we could be we could be back to living the life instantly. You never know. But you gotta you gotta prepare just in case. So plan on getting that stuff, but. More importantly, look forward to the This Boring Life that you get that you get next week. If you guys have any cool ideas for This Boring Life, please send them my way. I I think next I might do food. I talked about this in the earlier segment, but I want you I want to remind you so that you'll reach out to me. I've been thinking about doing one about food, like foods I used to like to eat, things I had like weird weird food quirks. I think that could be I think that could be interesting. I also Considered one about basketball, about hooping. That's more of a high school era story. I used to, I used to hoop every day over at the, over at the junior high school when they when they got out. There was like a regular game, and I used to do that. I was actually on the high school team for one year. That could be, that could be a fun story. Uh, music. I considered doing one about music where I could talk about just you know, the different tapes I've owned over my life. That one would be. That one would be pretty intensive, so I, I keep putting that one off. I've thought about doing one about Star Trek. My love for Star Trek. I think that that could be cool. If you have any ideas, hit me up on the tweets. That is at IC Robots, I-S-E-E-R-O-B-O-T-S, or on Facebook, facebook.com backslash IC Robots. We got a Patreon. You can you can help us out a ton by going over to supportthereport.com. Consider giving even like even like a buck a month. It all helps, man. If everybody gave a buck a month, we would be we'd be slightly better off than we are now. So consider doing that if you enjoy if you enjoy what we do here at uh, at old good icy robots radio. So until next time, and it might be an actual while before uh, before I talk to you guys with some with some new new content. So until then, this is me, icy robots. I'm signing off for. Signing off for Iceberg, signing off for Emily, signing off in some way for good old A.B. Silver and J5. J5's got a tweet. It's, uh, it's me, Johnny5. Go, go find him. He's been, he's been tweeting out some hot takes about the movie and stuff, so go look him up. So until next time, this is me, Icy Robots, EP150, Toys R Us stuff. If you don't know, now you know. KBHK TV 44, San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, Bay Area, Cable 12. This has been I See Robots Radio production. I See Robots Radio is a listener-supported in day hour. If you like what we do and we make your day a little easier, please consider tossing a few bucks our way to help keep the life support running. All money collected goes to help us prepare for future space pirate attacks. Go on over to supportthereport.com for all the details. Thanks and have a great week. E-L-E. That's right. E-L-E. What does E-L-E stand for? Everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. Right there up on the wall.